Moving on to running backs, we have guaranteed producers. Of course, you know, the top three with LT, LT2, AP, and uh, Brian Westbrook. Uh, but then also, too, Joseph Adai and Frank Gore are guys that have put up good numbers, you know, especially Frank Gore over the past couple of years. And he's adding Mike Martz to his team, and that's huge, I think, for Gore. And some people are worried because uh, Martz doesn't run the ball enough. But Martz gets the ball in the air to his running backs. Mm -hmm. And Gore already was a great receiver. Yes. I think he could catch 75 passes. Mm -hmm. And you'd rather catch 75 passes than have an extra 30 rushes because mm -hmm. he can get a lot of yards on those receptions. I like him about as a seventh running back. Mm -hmm. Joseph Adai, to me, is a guy who is the safest pick in that top five or six. He's going to score 12 or 14 times, might not get as many yards as the others, but after LT, he might be the safest guy. The Colts are going to score, and they're going to give it to him in the red zone. That's true, and also, too, they're not going to overwork him, too, because with Dominic Rhodes coming back, you know, he'll, he'll be able to spell for a die And sometimes. that's good and bad. He's not going to get you 325 carries like maybe Steven Jackson will if he, you know, ends his holdout and stays healthy. <laughs> There's questions all up and down the running backs, and that's why, you know, it's a little safer to take receivers this year. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. And and now with the sleepers and our breakout stars, Thomas Jones is someone that you and I are, are definitely looking at for sure. And uh, with Brett Favre, uh, like Brett Favre added to the mix, that's only going to help him. He's one of those guys It's just all about value. He's coming off a year he only got two touchdowns, but he's a solid player, mm -hmm. and the offensive line is better. They picked up a couple guys, including Alan Fanica. I think he'll just be solid, and he's the type of guy, if you take two receivers in rounds two and three, you could pick up Jones in round four. He'll get you 1,300 yards. He'll get you some touchdowns. That's right. That's right. And then also Brandon Jacobs and Amar Bradshaw. To, I mean, can they be able to produce fantasy-wise both of them? Should someone pick both of them? I think draft. so. You saw what the Giants did last year. Anyone they put out there did pretty well. And That's Jacobs right. obviously is the better player and has the higher upside. And Bradshaw is a nice reserve pick late in the draft. Mm -hmm. So Jacobs is a guy I think you get 12 to 14 touchdowns, a difference maker when he's in the game. And then Bradshaw's a guy that's really nice to have on your bench if you need some help. So with Pierre Thomas on the list, I mean, we have Reggie Bush and Deuce McAllister, not the most durable guys, so Pierre can definitely get some run this season. And Deuce McAllister's coming off a torn ACL and microfracture surgery on two different knees. He's already had an ACL before. I mean, I love this guy. I'm a Saints fan. I'm rooting for him, but the odds in NFL history just so stacked against him contributing much of anything this year. So Thomas is the guy that's going to come in and work with Reggie Bush because mm -hmm. he can't carry it by himself. Thomas, in Week 17 last year, had over 100 yards receiving and 100 yards rushing. That shows <laughs> his versatility. He's just a really talented guy on an offense that makes everyone look good. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. And, and, and uh, Oh, also, too, wanted to talk about potential disappointments now. We have Michael the Burner. Turner. Now, come on, he started getting his opportunity. I can't, I can't believe you have him on this. I want to like him, but I don't know if you knew which team he signed with. It was the oh, Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. Who, you know, they, <laughs> they survive. You know, they're they're allowed to stay in the NFL this year, which I wasn't too sure. I, mean, I don't know if they put him in arena league or something. But that, that's a bad looking team. They have a good backfield uh, with Turner and Jarius Norwood, but mm -hmm. Turner's got a good backup. Mm -hmm. He's caught, I think. Eight passes in his NFL career. That's a problem. So that's, right. that's a problem. His offensive line's really bad, and they're probably going to start Matt Ryan at quarterback. So it's not Turner that I don't like it's so much as the situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, and, and, and Larry Johnson, I mean, he's healthy, he's running well, and, uh, you know, definitely. And also with the Chiefs, they have more receiving weapons now, with Dwayne Bow being able to establish himself, and, of course, Tony Gonzalez. So. Well, if you look at my bust list or guys I want to avoid, there's – they have a lot of things in common. Larry Johnson, Michael Turner, uh, anyone on the Detroit Lions. <laughs> and here's what they have in common. They don't have good offensive lines, and they just don't have good offenses, period. And you have to be an exceptional Barry Sanders-type guy to overcome that. Maybe Larry Johnson was that guy a few years ago, but he is not that guy anymore. Mm -hmm. Even a second-round pick? No, I like him. Well, I have him at the very end of the second round, beginning of the third round. So mm -hmm. Okay. I have him about, you know, as the 15th running back, 25th overall. It's just I see him going, in my draft tonight, you went 10th. You know? Oh, no, uh, yeah, that's too I high. see him going 12th or 13th, so that that's too much. The, the, old, the old Larry Johnson will come back when Willie Rofe comes back, 
<laughs> and Will Shields comes back, and they're all they're old offensive linemen. That's not gonna happen. He still has some mileage left, you know. That's the thing, and he's a hard runner. So. He does. I don't think it's quite the situation of Sean Alexander last year. It's like Sean Alexander was a bust, and which I knew year, he was gonna be. And terrible. then the year after he was a bust, people still took him in the top ten. Oh, and then he was even a bigger bust. I think Larry Johnson's going to have a little bit of that, a bust, and then a bust again, <laughs> but not nearly as bad. He'll be serviceable. On the Sean Alexander tip, more is a guy like Rudy Johnson. He was a bust last year, and whoever takes him this year, he'll be a bust 